Today I'm going to tell you more information that you probably need about how to set up plans on the ASI Air. So here we are in the ASI Air interface. Now let's go and talk about plans. So quite simply, if we click the preview menu here, we go and jump over to plans. Now, what do they, how do these work? How do we set them up? Plans are basically multi, you can set them up as multi-target, of course, doing a single target also, but they are basically, if you want to shoot a target or multiple nights, you can have one plan for it, and then you can go to shoot another target, come back to it later, and it will remember how far along you were. So it's kind of like every time you shoot a project, if it takes like months for you to get all the data you need, you need to set it up as a plan. Now, once we're in the interface, we click the uh, hamburger menu right under the green plan. And from in here, we can control our plans. Now, if we click the um, hamburger icon again, here we can see our plans. I just have two plans right now. For the purpose of this video, we're going to create a new one with the plus icon up here in the corner. First, let's give our plan a name. Video demo. There we go. Good name for a plan. So now we can set some basic settings for the plan, how we want the ASI Air to perform doing this. Do we want auto guiding? Yeah, I think we do. Do we want to do an auto meridian flip? Yeah, sure, let's do that. Auto cooling? I would like that. We can also, um, we're going to come back to this timer here in a bit. The end option is basically what is the ASI Air going to do once the, um, once the plan ends. So we can turn off cooling and antidote, that's probably fine. Go to home position. But I actually like to just stay where you are right now. You can return the automatic focus source back to its original position, or you can shut down the air. So yeah, I'm just going to turn off cooling at the end. That's probably fine. Now, when it comes to the timer, you can now set when this is supposed to start and when it's supposed to end. Now, you can, of course, just say start now. This means when you click the play icon, we set everything up. It's just going to execute the plan right away. It's default, probably the most common setting. You can also set it to start at, so you can set a... Um, like a clock timer when uh, it should start. This can of course be handy if let's say you're shooting a target that rises at like more around two o'clock uh, in the night and you can just get it up until the morning and you don't want to be up at two, you just want to set the SIR, get it ready and then start the plan on a specific time. Then you can just say, okay, fair enough. Let's just go and say 2 a.m. Something like that, scroll it around. And, uh, and now the SIR is going to execute your plan at 2 a.m. Very, very neat, I think. I'm gonna jump this back to now, click confirm. Um, ending, we have a few more options here. We can just go when plan ends. That means whatever objects and targets we have, it's gonna complete the entire plan, no matter what happens. It's just gonna keep going um, until it's shut all the images you want. You can also go um, um, astronomical morning light. So that means it's just gonna say, okay, when does astronomical darkness ends and it should calculate that based on your position and time uh, and, and then you're just going to say okay when we exit astronomical darkness and we go into the to the nautical darkness in the morning it's going to stop the plan with however long it managed to get so it might not complete the plan fully but you're just going to stop when it begins to get too light in the morning or you can also as we could with the start at we can also set an end at when are this plan going to end so that's some quite neat um Need here. We're just going to go here and say when the plan ends, we're going to run all the way to the end. Okay, we can click confirm and we're now in our plan. I should say you now have a gear icon up here next to the burger menu. Clicking that brings up this menu. We can always go back and change these settings later if we wish to and you can also delete your plan from in here. Now that we are in the plan, we need to set up some targets. There are multiple ways we can do that. I'm going to show you a few of them now. We can, of course, just click the big plus icon here. That's going to open up uh, its own suggestions for tonight's best. Let's find a target. Um, I have M81s apparently there at the top of my list. So let's just select that, click, and click confirm. Now it's added M81 to my um, um, to my plans, so we can begin to continue. But that's not the way I would actually recommend you do it. We're going to delete that again. I'll show, actually I'll show you why. Well, I have to keep it and I'll show you why. If we jump back out here to the main menu and we click the constellation icon here in the lower left corner, there's M81. Now, with this camera setup here, it's okay because I have a relatively wide field of view. But if we're shooting another target, well, we haven't set the field rotation. Or maybe you didn't want it to be completely centered. Maybe you were shooting a target where you're like, you know what, I wanted to have it out here at the side or or you wanted to frame it slightly differently than just having the target smack bang in the middle of your frame. You 
of course couldn't do that if you just type in the target. So I would always recommend that you go in here to the Atlas. So I just picked Orion, the Orion Nebula here. So maybe the thing, this, the standard is it would pretty much point it right around here. But maybe I was like, you know what? I would actually rather have it framed like this. So this would be a lot better like framing for me maybe. So now I could click the plus and now the, uh, the Orion Nebula would be added with the specific framing that I've chosen here. Now you might have noticed something is, and I haven't really played around with the rotation. And that's because as you can see right now up in the corner, that I would normally have the rotation menu up here where it says compass, compass and mosaic. But right now I don't have the rotation options. So why do I have that? That's because I haven't done a plate solve yet. So in order to do that, we need to jump back out here. We need to go from plan to preview. And over here, we need to take an image right now. My telescope is sitting at my kitchen counter. So I can't show you right now, but you can see this solve icon here. So you basically need to take one picture with the camp, with the, within preview mode, click the solve icon, and then the ASIR will know the camera's rotation. And from that point on, then you should have access to, um, to setting the, um, and the rotation of the frame. Why you can't do that without actually taking a picture with stars in it, I don't know. Because if we go up here and you have a camera angle adjuster as I have, and we just enable that real quick, like so. And we now jump back over to our plan mode. We go in here and we once again look, just find the um, M82. Notice how now I have the rotation menu because I have a camera rotator and I can now choose the rotation. So maybe I wanted to have it like so. And then I could add that to the target but maybe we wanted to have like orion we also wanted to include like we have the whole set and the flaming nebula over here we wanted to include that as well in like a bigger mosaic kind of thing so we can also do that if we just clear this out again so we don't have anything in targets there we go um so we can go up and set up a um uh, set up a mosaic here we go so by default it will go to a two by two panel with a 10 percent overlap if you have a camera rotator so you can maybe get away with a 10 percent overlap I would often go a little bit higher, go up to 20, maybe all the way to 30 if this is your first mosaic, but I think 20 should be uh, should be fine. So now I could do a two by two mosaic. Maybe I want to put that in like that so we get everything nice in frame. Do I, do I like this rotation here? Mm -hmm. Maybe I want to rotate it something like that looks good. I like this framing here. And if I now click plus to the plan, Notice how it added four different targets. It's basically four different panels, four different locations where it needs to be. So this would be a multi-target and we can use that. But I could also, if I wanted to, let's go out of mosaic mode. There we go. Add that to the plan. I, I can add that to the plan as well. So if we go back and go in and look at our plan now, we can see we have panel 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 1, and 2, 2. And then we have both galaxy here at the end. This is now our entire plan for the targets. But now we need to tell the ASIR what um, what pictures it's going to take with each uh, within each target. So we need to click the details. We're going to start with panel 1 1. Click details and in here we have some additional settings. We can see the target name, going to keep that as is. We can actually see the, the angle here. So we could we could correct that if we wanted to do a manual correction of a single frame in the uh, in the mosaic we could rotate just one of them if we wanted to we can see the exact location right ascension declination and then first delay is just how long it should wait um once everything is slewed before it starts taking the first picture if you want to make sure everything settles in i usually keep that at zero click the plus icon and say okay we want to shoot some uh, some light frames maybe i want to i usually shoot 300 seconds so let's put that in 300 very good let's say we should some hydrogen alpha maybe h with a gain of 100, there we go. And we said how many pictures we want. Let's say we want 12, there we go. That's two hours of data. No, oh, one hour of data, sorry. We click confirm and we can see that light frame is now in here. And we can then continue, do the same thing. We've got H, so let's go with S. Put the exact same things in here as well. And notice how you have little check marks, so you can basically enable and disable parts of it. So if you've made, maybe you set up some biases, maybe you set up some flats. Let's say we put up some random flats, but I don't actually want to shoot flats right now. I just wanted to go through with just light, so I can just go in and disable them. Notice this um, white bar underneath the light, the, the name says light, there's this white bar underneath. That's not decorative, that shows there's a progress bar that will slowly fill up as you begin to take pictures, so you can see how far it is with each of them. We have them 
Um, out here you can also go and, and basically enable which target um, has been added. We can't enable these because we haven't set up a sequence, so we need to go into each panel and set this up exactly as we want. Now we're just trying to set up some random ones here so we can show you how you can enable that. So you can basically enable which targets you want in your plan um, for that night. Now, if you have a lot of targets, maybe you're doing a big mosaic and you don't want to have to go through and set up the same frames in all the different panels. There we go. Now I set up a nice narrow band plan. And so let's say this is what I want to shoot. I could click up here, uh, the, um, the little plus icon um, in the square. And I could now um, say, copy schedule to all. Now it says the shooting schedule for all targets will be replaced with whatever is in here, and we say confirm. Once we've done that, we can now see that in all the plans have now gotten the same sequence of images added to it. So we can control that and we don't have to sit and set it up manually for every single target. And the other option you had in here was copy to subsequent. What that means is it will copy the, um, the, the shooting plan to all targets that's later than your current target in the plan. So if you already have a mosaic and then you go to a second mosaic and you, but you want that to maybe be in, uh, in LRGB instead, you can just say, okay, if just from, from this first one and to the rest in the plan, you can you can just copy that over if that's what you wanted to do. The last option you have is the, uh, is the recycle icon all the way up here in the corner. Clicking that will reset the schedule. So remember how I said it will remember um, how far along you are in a plan. And you can reset that if you want to basically reshoot the plan for some reason. As soon as we are done setting our plan, we can now see out here, we can see we are currently, we've finished zero of four targets and we have shot zero of 36 images for our current target. And um, now it's just clicking the big um, play icon or uh, take photo icon and the plan is beginning to execute. The telescope is going to slew to the target, it's going to plate salt, make sure that it's perfectly centered where you set it to be and it's going to begin shooting data and just going to automatically switch between everything if you have filter wheels and all that other fancy stuff. So that is everything you need to know about plans on the ASI Air. If there are other topics you would like me to cover, please put them in the comment section below because then I'll be more than happy to make a guide for you. Which is a noticeable improvement for just changing a single setting. But we are only just getting started. There's a load more things that we... First test is going to be tinfoil. This is good for many things, primarily making hats. But we're going to try to see if we can make...